up in a Christian home like all my life and every couple months I'd like ask Jesus to come into my heart just like every six months be like oh it's that time come in my heart Jesus so I could make sure I was going to heaven and no big deal I was really really disrespectful didn't really like authority I didn't really like to obey like no big deal and then I went to D now in sixth grade and the preacher was talking one night and I just kind of like zoned him out and started talking to God one on one and just I realized that all those years I was just saying, Jesus come in my heart, I want to go to heaven and no big deal. I really realized I wasn't like living the way of a Christian, it wasn't <clears throat> for real. So I just asked him to come into my heart and forgive me for all I had done. And after that a lot had changed. I wasn't, I mean, I felt a lot of guilt when I was sin. It was a big deal to me. And I want to get baptized to obey what Jesus wants and to show him that myself. That's awesome. Thank you, Mary. There you are. Hey, you got to This is Taylor Townsend, and she's also going to share her testimony with you. When you were little, you probably thought that you had the perfect family, that you had the best dad in the world, or the mom that could do anything. And your parents brag on how you're such a great kid and how you make perfect grades. If you're at the ages of either four or five not involved in the church, you don't really realize how simple you really are. You think everything is about you when it really isn't. And on my fifth birthday, I started to realize how imperfect my family was. Seeing how my dad was acting different. Go away. Sorry, Go away from my parents and I, without telling me, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. I, failed, I figured out why my um, dad was leaving and why all the odd behavior had been happening. I was old enough to figure out that my father wasn't the honest, trustworthy person I thought he was. I knew my dad was doing bad things throughout my family, and my family just didn't realize I knew about it. I was still too young to know why he was doing this, but I decided to shake it off and just let everything settle down. A few years passed since the last time I saw my dad, and my mom finally told me that he had moved to Georgia, and they had gotten a divorce. Um, my dad was a drug addict, and um, he stole from my family. Um, and so my mom got a divorce to protect me. I didn't understand what a divorce was, and I was really confused. I was wondering, why does this have to happen to me? Why, um, I'm a good person, and then I asked myself, does he really love me, or is that a lie to Other kids are loved by their father. Why does this have to happen to me? I was stuck in a situation I couldn't get out of, and I didn't know how to handle it. My mom and I were living in my grandparents' house in a one-bedroom apartment off and on for about three years. My mom worked really hard to support shelter and feed a small family of two without my father's help at all. And it made what we made what little we had work. Two years later, I was eight years old, and my Aunt Bridget was surprising my mom by introducing me to a man named Lawson Craig. And now they're married. <laughs> Lawson introduced me to this thing called church, and he said I had to go there every Sunday. I thought it was weird at first, but I got used to it. When my mom was baptized at Wesley Memorial Church, I didn't understand uh, why she was doing this. I saw that the preacher asked her questions, and she would say yes a few times, and then boom, she was baptized. That got me curious to what the whole baptism thing was. The next three or four years of my life were really hard with the divorce issues. Um, but these times were the times that I grew closer to God. I moved to Nashville after my mom and Lawson got married, and we continued to go to church. In the meantime, my mom had my little brother Lawson and decided to make decided to move back to Decatur where our family lived. My moving back to Decatur and going to Decatur Heritage was the best thing that's ever happened to me. The HCA really explained everything about my Christian walk and how to live a life that is pleasing to God. My family got involved in First Bible Church and we started attending every Sunday. I accepted Jesus into my heart after hearing a sermon about God's grace. I learned that 
first, filing for first Bible that in God's eyes, sin is sin, and it doesn't matter what kind of person you are, good and bad, we're all sinners, and all sin is displeasing to Him. I know God, and I know He sent His Son to, the, to die for us, so He would live, so He wouldn't live eternally in hell. He sent His Son for everybody's sin, even my dad. I uh, also learned that God always will be, God will always be there for you when other people aren't. Through the good and the bad and the ugly, He will still be our Heavenly Father. He motivates me to be a better daughter for Him. And that's why I'm being baptized out of obedience to Him. Because He deserves it. My story shows that nothing about human nature is perfect except, perfect except for Jesus. And even if we try our hardest, we'll never live up to how perfect Jesus was. But, but God loves us anyways and always will. Like I said, the reason that we do baptism is, one, because Jesus has commanded us to. And when you're a follower of Christ and you realize what He's done for you in your life, it's the natural response to do what He's asked of you. And two, it's a representation. It, it shows what is going on on the inside, on the outside for everyone else to see. So you're, you're going to get to be witnesses of the external representation of, the, of these girls and their sins that have been washed away. Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. Based on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life.